like healing, the idea of healing really isn't about becoming the best versions of ourselves, but really about loving all versions of ourselves and kind of really rising into our full expression of our truth. Horses have this beautiful ability to allow us to surrender to ourselves and experience what our true self is really like without all of the other noise. Welcome to the Not Just a Pony Ride podcast, presented to you by Hetra University. If you've landed here, you're probably passionate about how horses help people. This podcast is for anyone who helps others experience the benefits of horses or those who have experienced it themselves. If you're in the equine assisted services industry, we're here to help you. If you're here just to learn more, you're in the right place. Welcome to your community of like-minded people where you will hear stories, education, science, and explanations about how what we do is so much more than just a pony ride. And now from the Hetra campus in Gretna, Nebraska, here's your host, occupational therapist and CTRI, Katie Ott. Thank you for joining me today, Haley. I'm excited to get to know you a little more. Yeah, thank you for having me. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell um, our listeners what you do out there in the beautiful state of Montana? Yeah, so I do a, I do a, a lot of things. Um, but one of the main things that I'm focusing on right now this summer is my coaching business, Rising Free Retreats. Um, I got certified as an equine gestalt coach at the end of 2022 from Melissa Pierce's Touch by a Horse um, Equine Gestalt Certification Program. So for the last like two years, I've been really focused on building that aspect of my life and um yeah, I'm also building a marketing and branding agency on the side of that. So just kind of organically became an entrepreneur. Um, and it's been it's been a wild ride full of lots of growing pains, but definitely learning a lot in, in kind of both both aspects of things. I can tell that you have a marketing background because your website is gorgeous. It's beautiful. <laughs> and thank you. Thank yes. You. And your social media. So when we get to the end, I'll, you can tell everybody how to find you like on social media, but, um, that's kind of what initially drew me. Um, obviously the horse piece of things, cause that's what we do, but the beautiful branding and marketing, um, really, really is what did it for me. And, uh, when I went to your website, the, um, come to peace with all of your pieces was just, I love that. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of how you ended up in the equine world and helping people through horses? Sure. Yeah. It's, it was kind of like a, a long journey, but I kind of came back around like it was a 360 degree turn. So I grew up around horses. I was born and raised in Montana I didn't ever have horses myself, but I was always the girl at the local rodeo and fair where they would auction off a horse and I would save up all of my allowance money to buy the tickets to like win the the colt, right? And I never won. Um, my parents, it was probably a blessing for them because they had nowhere to put a horse. Um, But I was always that girl that just wanted a horse in her life. And so when I got to became an adult and I moved to Colorado and was doing the corporate kind of lifestyle, I started volunteering for a therapeutic riding center out in Colorado and getting back involved with horses and taking riding lessons and really getting like firsthand experience of how horses are showing up in a really kind of healing and therapeutic way for people. Fast forward a few years later, um, I got really burnt out in the corporate world. I mean, I was going a million miles an hour. I also, as I started to get older, got really curious about some of the behavior patterns that I was exhibiting in terms of like perfectionism and really seeking out relationships where I couldn't really be my full self. Um, 
living more on other people's terms than living for my for my heart essentially and so i kind of on a whim i didn't know i was going to do this but i decided to quit my job one day i just kind of walked in and i said i i've had enough of this i don't want to do it anymore and it was a mutual decision like we had had a lot of disagreements my boss and i And so she was like, I think it's probably the best thing for you. And I agreed. And I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life after that. Um, But I had also made the decision that I was going to move back home to Montana. My parents really were like, Haley, what are you going to do here? There's (laughs) nothing. How are you going to get a job here? And I said, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. And so it was actually, it was August about... August 2019. So I was packing up my apartment and I got this email from Touched by a Horse and I had never heard of them before in my life, had no idea who they were. I don't even know how they got my email address, but Mm -hmm. I opened up the email and there was a video and it's the same video that's on their website, the like the bit when you first go to the website. And it just, it spoke to me so much. And I was like, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I filled out the application. I was one of the last ones to get in for that January class. Um, had no job, moved home to Montana. And it was kind of one of those moments where I could have said no, because so many things weren't aligned for me to do a two-year certification program, but instead I said yes. And it changed the whole trajectory of my life. It was kind of a win. There was no, there was no planning. There was no like, it all just kind of fell in my lap organically. And Mm -hmm. for really the first time in my life, I went with what I wanted to do, what was kind of calling me and pulling me in that direction. I love that. And I, so I'm curious then, is that how you got your basis to work with the population that you do? Because um, if you'll, you can explain it a little bit for our audience, but you do um, a lot of work with women, women's retreats and um, a lot of that type of thing. And so do you want to explain a little bit how that's, because you can work with any population, you know, with equine gestalt, how did that organically happen for you? Yeah, when I was going through this program, for me, in terms of like deciding who I wanted to work with and who I best aligned with, I really was coming from it at a standpoint of what I know. And what I know really well is this pattern of abandoning myself to please other people. And I know that just from experience and from friends and talking with women that it is a similar, um, it's a similar struggle that other women can kind of step into and identify with. Mm -hmm. And I wanted as much as I'm still kind of in the process of reclaiming my voice and finding my voice and finding out who I am. For me, it seems really authentic and natural for me to support other women in that same, in that same exact kind of role, because I get it and I've been there and I'm doing it too with them. Um, So it was just like a natural kind of connection for me. And just the point that like, we don't have to settle. We can be whoever we want to be. We don't have to be who we're expected to be. And at any point in our life, no matter how far we've got set down the corporate hole We can always pull ourselves back and kind of reignite the joy and passion that kind of lives within us. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that women are more prone to that than men? Falling into like the trap of Mm self-abandonment. I think it can be so many different factors. It can be the environment that they grew up in. Mm -hmm. But I also think as a whole, as a society, we have all, women for the longest time have been really conditioned to 
play really small and keep quiet to kind of please the masses. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's been a trajectory where we've been moving in the other direction where women have really started to kind of step into their power. But I've also seen it go too extreme where it's like we're fully playing out in our masculine and we completely abandon the really soft and beautiful parts of ourselves in order to compete with the whole you have to do it all as a woman sort of mentality. And so, yeah, it's a really interesting, I think it's a really interesting world for women today, especially women who are in their 30s and 40s and upwards, really starting to kind of pull back the curtains on what we've learned our roles are supposed to be as women and kind of start to explore who they want to be am- amongst all of it without feeling like they're not doing enough or they're not doing it the way that people want them to do it. Yes, I completely agree. And I think to your point of we've sort of gone the opposite extreme where now we have to be viewed as as women who can do it all. They can have families and have the successful career and you know have all these things and sort of that question of like do we if that's not what you want? Yeah, I mean Right. Be a be a stay at home mom. Yeah, it's about just stepping into like your truth and feeling mm-hmm. empowered in that, whatever that looks like, and not settling for what everybody else expects of you. Right. And I so in kind of looking through your website, you have a um sort of like a I would call it like a methodology maybe um that you call bear and you talk a lot about kind of stripping it down and getting back to like you know, who we are at the very core and fundamental of ourselves. Do you want to explain to our listeners a little bit about that bear kind of model? Yeah, that bear model came out of when I had left the corporate kind of world. I was stepping away from Colorado. I had really kind of come to this like moment where I had really felt like I didn't know myself anymore. And everything was kind of being taken away from me that I had known, right? Like my whole identity was like being put on display and for me to question and really kind of zero in on. And it was in those moments where I, where life sometimes hands you an opportunity where like everything is stripped bare and like you're just left with yourself to kind of dig around and pick up the pieces that mean something to you, but not taking everything with you on like your next chapter. So that's kind of where the idea of bear came from. And it really is. It's like the willingness to surrender, kind of take down all of the armors that we've and the masks that we've put on to protect ourselves And sitting in like the rawness and the realness of ourselves and really taking, getting curious about what's under there and what we want to reclaim and resurrect to kind of help lead us forward in our next kind of chapter in life. Mm, I love that. Yes. And it's a, um, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Acronym, right? Yes. It's an acronym. Yeah. So bear B. So B stands for begin. Um, and it is a process. So whenever I get in with a client, we start with curiosity, which is a huge value of mine, um, where you really begin to like get present in the present more moment and like explore and just gain some clarity and awareness around what's in you asking to be heard and seen just simply being in the present moment of the messages that your body is trying to send you. Um, A is awaken. So really starting to awaken your courage to be vulnerable, to really dig into the trenches and look at beliefs that we've acquired, um, stories that we've told ourselves, experiences that we never really 
that ne- don't really feel complete. Like there's a lot of unfinished business in, um, and really just using that courage to start releasing the energy that's kind of keeping us stuck where we are. Um, then R is reclaim. So really reclaiming and welcoming home all the parts of ourselves that we've abandoned or let go of a very long time ago and kind of bringing them to the forefront to kind of move forward with. And then E, which is really what I believe equine gestalt coaching does so beautifully is embracing all of ourselves like healing, the idea of healing really isn't about becoming the best versions of ourselves, but really about loving all versions of ourselves and embracing everything about us and kind of really rising into our full expression of our truth. I love that. I really, really do. I think that horses have this incredible way of showing us that too, because they completely accept you for who you are and they don't care about, you know, this, that, or what you think about yourself or whatever. And, but they can sense some of that dissonance too. So it's, it's incredible to me how, how they have that mirror for us. Yeah. It's incredible. And it's so amazing to watch people step into the presence of a horse because horses just have this natural inclination to bring so much emotion up in a person. I have so many clients that come to me and they're really nervous to be there. And as soon as I put them next to the horse, all of their defenses and their worries just kind of melt away. And the te- and they just automatically start crying and mm-hmm. things start coming up. And it really is like horses have this beautiful ability to allow us to surrender to ourselves and experience what our true self is really like without all of the other noise Mm -hmm. and really start to explore what we want to move forward with and where we want to shift in our life. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really kind of magical thing to experience. Mm Mm-hmm. So we had, um, the podcast actually had Melissa Pierce on, Ooh, and I'm, tr- I'm trying to, uh, remember what episode number it was, but I will link it in the show notes for everybody to go listen to that and learn more about equine gestalt. Um, it's, it's really an incredible thing. Um, but just really briefly, will you kind of explain what your job is, um, as the equine gestalt coach kind of, as we're walking, you're walking people through this process. Sure. Yeah. So as an equine gestalt coach, my my main kind of role is to guide you in finding the answers that you hold within yourself. The co-active coaching model um, truly kind of leans into the belief that we are all whole and creative and resourceful and we have the answers within us. So as a coach, it's I'm, my only job is to help guide you deeper into your full awareness of your truth and whatever action steps you want to take from that are yours to take. Um, but also in the modality, I see the horse as my true partner. They are the other coach in the process. Um, they're not a tool. They're not. I don't use them. I don't use them. Like it really is a true partnership. They're constantly giving me clues into what my client is experiencing within themselves. So I can ask deeper questions for them Mm -hmm. to go further into themselves. So then do you typically, um, what does a session look like? Are you in like a round pen or, you know, kind of tell us a little bit about what that looks like from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, um, in all of my private sessions, I work out of kind of like a half arena. So I don't have a round pen, but it's like a a smaller downscale version of of a large arena. And we're just in there with the horse on free liberty. And I've actually really enjoyed that aspect of um, 
having the horse so involved in the whole entire process of a client showing up with me. Mm-hmm. Um, in my group work, we do work out of a round pen and I have all of the women sitting on the outside of the round pen and we go in, in and out. It's kind of like a, a flow, but um, I would say for the most part, what I, and Melissa does, is not going to want to hear this because it's not what she taught us to do. But with one horse and having the women, the horse really be with us instead of having that separation. For me, I found that that's where I've gotten the most out of it and where the women have gotten the most out of it. Is so we're, the, we're, right, we're right in with the horse. Got yeah. It the Mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. Very good. So you have um, a few different program offerings. So you have groups and then you do privates, right? And then um, through your social media, I've seen that you've done like some drop-in work. Do you want to explain a little bit like the structure of how you do things? Sure. So right now um, I'm just kind of growing the business organically. So I started just taking private clients Um, I've done, I've put together like a body love program where it's kind of like a stripped down version of Gestalt without the horses, where it's really about helping women find safety in their bodies first before getting into this Gestalt work. Um, Then I offer, and that's just kind of like a one-time program. Sometimes it's four weeks, sometimes it's six weeks that I do in the fall and the spring. And then throughout the summer months, right now I'm doing a drop-in women's group where it's every Monday evening, two and a half hours. You come when your schedule permits. I have women that have shown up multiple weeks. Every week I get a new batch of women, which is really fun to kind of work with. Um, And what I'm working towards is eventually building up to doing like full like three four day retreats Mm -hmm. at a beautiful guest ranch somewhere um but right now it's really just kind of building my experience and and my comfort with kind of what works for me in a session private and group wise Mm -hmm. and then taking that knowledge into more of like the long weekend kind of retreat aspect. Yeah, that makes sense. Something new and exciting has come to the Not Just a Pony Ride brand. Introducing Patreon. Patreon is a subscription-based site in which we can share even more with our equine-assisted community. Join us for $5 and gain access to a ton of exciting perks. My favorite perk is probably the monthly networking call hosted by Hetra's CEO and COO. It's on the first Thursday of every month at noon. In the last few months we've done it, we have had people join us from all over the United States looking to share their struggles, success, and expertise in this field. A really cool way to connect. My second favorite perk is probably the free access to a CEU-eligible webinar every single month. That's a $10 webinar that you get for only $5 with your subscription, plus so much more like training documents, lesson plans, and a variety of other tips and tricks. It just makes sense. So don't try to recreate the wheel or spend hours looking for quality continuing education. Join us on Patreon now. The link is in the show notes below. So because, so this is kind of a two-part question. So you are in the Bozeman area, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, obviously a like more populated um, part of Montana. Yeah. But do you have um, any difficulty recruiting participants or what has your, you know, what has your client recruitment kind of looked like? Um, because just because it is a little bit more of a narrowed scope, right? So how do you go about recruiting that clientele? Yeah, I honestly, as a as a marketing person, I will tell you that I have not done all of the marketing things that I would tell a typical marketing client of myself to do. <laughs> when I first moved to this area, I grew up in Western Montana. So I didn't grow up in this area at all. I didn't really know anybody. And that was about three years ago. And for me, it was important to really start building community. 
So I really started putting myself out there in terms of going to a lot of networking events, finding other women who have been really influential in this community, who maybe are doing similar things, but kind of in different industries and connecting with them and really just building those connect connections organically and naturally. And I have been blessed to really find a really incredible network of people who have referred people to me. So everything really has been based on referrals from the women within the community that I have connected with. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really done much marketing. (laughs) That's how you know that what you're doing works is because it's um, kind of the word of mouth kind of, well, and also I think it's, yeah. And also I think it speaks to the need because just thinking about, you know, at, at our center, we have um, full-time mental health and we have, uh, you know, a lot of groups and things that are happening, but we um, really don't have anything that's specific to women and women's issues. And, you know, some of the things that you're talking about that I think a lot of women experience. And so for you to be vulnerable and say, yes, I experienced this. And I think other women have too. And here is an invitation to explore that. I think speaks volumes to the need that for that too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I honestly, I, when I go out and I, and I meet people, I just want to be myself and share my story. And I think just being in my truth invites them to participate in something where they have the opportunity to explore what their truth is as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been, um, it hasn't been a, it's been a slow burn kind of growth for me. And it's exactly what I've really learned to love. Um, And now I actually am am giving that feedback to my marketing clients is like, it's okay to build things organically, especially when you're in an industry that is so um, service oriented, where I really want to get in front of the women that eventually are going to come and see me because that's where I start building that relationship with them for them to be able to trust me, to be able to guide them Mm -hmm. into the experience that they're having. Right. And I think that um, I'm going to go out on a limb to say that probably at least 50%, if not more of our listeners are women. And I think that's kind of inherent in the equine industry, um, especially what we do as um, people who are in the therapeutic side of things, because that's kind of a, a womanly instinct, a feminine instinct to want to heal and take care of people and the horse thing and all of that. So I think that um, even a little bit of like passion fatigue even happens when you get into the work that we're doing now, you know, um, just being so there's always more we can do and there's always more people we can help. And, and then losing a little bit of yourself in that process too, even when we get to a career that we love and we're in and, you know, so I think it's just always something to keep in mind, no matter what stage of life that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. I I would say that rings so true to me. I mean, I remember last year uh, around this time, I was feeling so burnt out because I was saying yes to everything Mm -hmm. because I thought as a new business owner that I couldn't say no, that that would do some, that would deter people from wanting to come and see me. Mm -hmm. Um, and which really isn't the case. And this year I've really kind of leaned into saying yes to the things that really light me up and that I know I can really make a difference in. Mm -hmm. And I know that not everybody is, I can't be what everybody wants me to be for them. And so if it's not the right experience for you, then it's not the right experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with only seeing a few women a week as opposed to having client sessions every single day, because to me, it's, it's the right people that I'm attracting. 
Yes, a hundred percent. And I think that kind of the description you used of having a slow burn is something that Mm -hmm. is, I think more sustainable, um, not only for your business, but for, you know, us personally and our mental health and physical health, um, to build businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's nothing wrong with going slow. Um, and that is something that I have had to give myself permission to do because I was always the one that's like charge ahead. We have to be successful. We're going to do whatever it takes, but you're right. That isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I have to honor where I'm at in this process as well. Um, and meet myself where I can actually extend my energy and not go any further than that. Yeah. And for me right now, it's, I've, I've found a really nice balance of building this business because at the same time I have this other business too, (laughs) (laughs) that I'm nurturing and that I'm growing and that pays the bills. Um, So really learning how to find a nice harmonious balance between the two without burning myself at both ends. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that kind of leads us into when we usually wrap up with, you know, kind of the question of if you could get in a time machine and tell yourself, you know, go back and tell yourself some advice you know, your young professional Um, self, what would you tell her? Man, that's such an, that's such a great question. I mean, I would tell myself so many things. (laughs) Probably the, the first thing that I would tell myself is that there's no such, such thing as being perfect. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be perfect. There isn't, there isn't a thing for it. And the best way to move through life is to, and it is a mantra of mine to move with what moves you, Mm. which is what I have started to do, but something I never knew was possible or I could give myself permission to do. Mm -hmm. And to trust that when you really start, when you start being your full authentic self and stepping into your truth, all of the opportunities align organically. You don't have to force or push anything. Mm -hmm. Like the things that aren't meant for you will fall away. And the things that are meant for you will kind of line align into place. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I would have known that a lot earlier because I spent so much time pushing and forcing things that were just really not meant for me to begin with. And it caused a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. And and I think at the end of the day, that is the path that I had to go through in order to be where I'm at and to be Mm. able to support other women. But yeah, it's a, it's a piece of advice that I, I never really heard. I never really heard like, it's okay just to be you. Oh, I completely agree with that. And I think, um, especially as when we're young women, like in, even like in high school or, you know, starting to go to college and that type of thing, it's just always like push, 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 be, you know, be, be better, be bigger, choose a career. That's, you know, all of these things. And nobody, nobody ever stopped me as a young woman and said, what do you want? Like, what do you love? What, like, like you said, what moves you? What, you know, what do you, you know? So it's, such an interesting concept and yeah and so and I think you are correct too in saying that we have to go through a lot of those things to now be in the position that we're in where we can say oh well (laughs) you know I wish that wouldn't have been that way but now we're we've grown you've grown so much but so it's a double-edged sword yeah yeah it's like yeah it's like you there's so much of that journey that I wish I didn't have to go through, but at the same time, it's like, that was my journey to go through and figure it out. And I, it's really interesting because as much as I love working with women, I have really started a lot of young teenage girls have started to come to see me, which 
really is truly an honor and a blessing to be mm-hmm. able to sit with them at such a young age and really guide them and kind of be that voice that I didn't hear when I was younger. I love that. To say, listen, you don't have to figure it all out right now. Like, just be you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Makes my heart so happy. Well, yeah. thank you, Haley. You've been fantastic. I, it's really been a joy talking with you and, and learning more about what you're doing. Um, where can people find you um, online or on social media if they want to learn more? Sure. So you can find me at risingfreeretreats.com. Um, I love getting emails. So you can email me at Haley at risingfreeretreats.com. I'm on all the social channels, Mm -hmm. Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, just Rising Free Retreats. I'd be happy to to talk to anybody if anyone has questions. Anybody that wants to come to Montana, (laughs) come on out. I love that. Well, I'll link everything um, in the show notes for everyone. Go click on it and check out Haley and her um, beautiful work that she's doing in Montana. And again, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Katie. I appreciate this so much. It has been so wonderful. Thanks for listening to another episode. Until the next one launches, stay connected to our community by joining the Not Just a Pony Ride Facebook group. There, we share exclusive educational content, answer your questions, and review new and exciting developments for the EAS community. Don't forget, if you have suggestions for future episode topics or a lead on a great guest that you think our audience would enjoy, click on the link in the show notes or visit us at hetrauniversity.org. This podcast is presented by Hetra University, an educational arm of the Heartland Equine Therapeutic Writing Academy. Hetra University's mission is to provide high-quality educational offerings to our participants and the EAS community. If you'd like to help us work toward our mission, you can make a donation by visiting us online at hetra.org. Again, I can't thank you all enough for helping Hetra change lives one stride at a time.